In today's video, I wanna show you how I use the new rock base theme to redesign one of my other websites, thepodcastsetup.com. This is the live site right now. This is still running 2024. I haven't officially made my changes live. They're on a staging site on wordpress.com. Fun fact, the staging side of wordpress.com is actually pretty easy to use and works rather well. I'll, I'll double check that once I actually push it live, but so far, uh, no problems running a staging site. Here's what rock base uh, allows me to do with this new theme a lot more uh, detailed, a lot more bold, in your face, readable. It just looks really good. I didn't use all of the elements of Rock Base. I customized a few areas, and that's what I want to punch into in today's video. It's going to be a longer video. I apologize. I've tried recording this a couple of times, and it got a little bit off the off the rails. So I'm going to try to keep this. Uh, as informative and as concise as possible. So with the 2024 theme, all I did really was change the look and feel of uh, the homepage by putting in my own call to action sign up. And I, I was actually coming off of a ghost hosted site, which is another open source publishing platform. I was using their hosted version because I, I just wanted to try something new. And then I wanted to try something new again and really experience how WordPress.com works so that I could have a more well-rounded uh, experience with the whole WordPress.com versus WordPress.org debate. So I kind of replicated what I had with Ghost and mimicked it with 2024. I am not a designer, which is why I love themes like Rockbase or any theme that helps get me there. So I copied some things like this call to action. Uh header with uh, a newsletter sign up, this featured podcast setup section, which I just made myself three columns using typical blocks, uh, a secondary call to action, and then just the blog post uh, list of most recent blog posts, and then another call to action. Some of these blocks were 2024, like this one specifically. It doesn't look all that great when you start to break apart how they designed it versus how you want to use it as a normal person. Still love 2024. Um, I still think it's a great starter theme, uh, but uh, there are definitely some areas of improvement when you want to have a richer design experience. Contrast that or compare that to the rock-based theme you know, design for digital creators like myself, design specifically for people like me running a newsletter. And I think that the design uh, is just a lot richer, a lot better uh, in the rock base experience. Now, let's go ahead and dive into some of these areas so you can kind of understand how I approach this and what I did differently uh, with rock base. And first, let me pull up uh, the rock base website. They have a bunch of playbooks. If you haven't seen my other video taking a look at Rockbase, I'll link that up below. Uh, made by Rafal Tamal, one of the most famed WordPress theme designers uh, literally on the planet. And they have these three playbooks that they ship with Digital Creator, Podcaster, and Digital Product. I'm using the Digital Creator variant. And you can see that uh, if we were to pull these side by side, put this one here. So if we put them side by side, uh, the default template that they've designed versus what I've developed. Uh, I changed a few things. I didn't use everything that they have with their particular layout. Like for instance, I used sort of like this in this hero section, I took out uh, what I'll call like social proof content, uh, like the ratings and reviews, because I don't have 24,000 creators on my newsletter. So I kind of removed that. I removed some of these other stats here, which are what I would call vanity stats. Used this AI generated image that I've been using since I started the podcast setup, just as like a representation uh, of a podcast setup, which I'll probably change in the future. Took out the services section because I'm not really selling anything. Took out the about me section. Uh, led with just my featured section, which I was using on the other site. Uh, so I could just showcase, hey, here's the three featured podcast setups that I've um you know, that I'm showcasing. I don't have any reviews, so I took that section out here. And then I modified their blog role. Um, I didn't modify it. I used one of their own patterns for blogs, but I just didn't use the one that was uh, designed from the playbook. And then another call to action, I'll scroll down to the bottom. I did use this one again, cleaned up some of those vanity metrics uh, for like social proof and whatnot. And uh, actually used a different variant. I didn't use one with the, uh, the in-field 
or the field inside the block, I used a call to action button that you click to apply to have your podcast set up uh, presented on our newsletter. So that's how I modified that uh, compared to the standard default view. But again, just totally different from the real sparse <laughs> design that I that I have running now. It's night and day in terms of you know design, but I, I really didn't spend any time in the 2020, to be fair, I didn't spend any time designing this or, or really doing it. I quickly replicated what I had with Ghost and did this as like a quick afternoon job. Now, there are some other things that I modified here uh, that Rockbase programs into the theme itself, things that will make life pretty easy for you when you're trying to decide just on a color scheme uh, or color palette on how you want to design a site. They ship with 20 plus different styles here. This stuff can get pretty... You know, the, the nomenclature, the vocabulary, the terms that the site editor use, still a bit all over the place, but there's a style section here that you can quickly click on uh, and find new typography settings, new color settings. Um, and it's, this is something that is in core WordPress. Uh, and what Rockbase did was extend it by just applying their own color sets, their own typography sets, so that you could quickly go in and change that. Uh, this is a core feature, and and I want to call that out with Rockbases. They they kept to developing this theme as close to core as possible. I think 100% core. I, there's no other plugin that you're installing with Rockbases, no third-party asset coming in to help design uh, Rockbase-type themes. So I really appreciated, appreciated that. I, you know, why did I pick this organic bronze color? Well, because at some point in my life, I <laughs> created another AI image for the site icon, and I'm just running with that as a logo right right now. This is a side, side, side project the podcast setup is, and it was already this orange color, so I was like, hey, let me get something close to that, something warm, rich. I had this uh, log cabin type image, again, another thing I created on an AI to just showcase uh, a podcast setup. And it kind of just all worked naturally together. So that's what I rolled with. Uh, one of the great things about Rockbase, tons of really detailed patterns uh, that you can apply uh, that are pre-designed uh, by Rafal and the team. And they're just great. Uh, the designs are sharp. They're bold. Uh, they get the job done, especially for newsletter call to actions, uh, regular call to action buttons. I think it's phenomenal. So I just modified them a little bit, like I showed you uh, on the default theme, took out that social proof stuff. And in this featured section, which they don't particularly have a design for, this is the one I had to spend a little time uh, modifying myself. This is their uh, query loop styles. And what I did is I just came in and I said, hey, look, I'm going to drop in a query loop. I'm going to do three columns and uh, I'm going to just modify. So the three columns right here. And then I'm just going to modify uh, the styles so that the hover effects are in. Uh, I remove the excerpt. I remove the, the date stamp or the timestamp uh, of the post title, remove the excerpt, remove the read more button uh, or link. And then I just left the title. Uh, and the featured image, which you can see here in this group is just featured image and just title. It ships with, again, the, the excerpt, the timestamp, and uh, the read more link. I got rid of that. I just wanted something simple and clean. This is something that I had on Ghost. And I'm just like, yeah, featured section. These are just the three posts that I want. Now, I couldn't just select uh, three posts with the query loop. Query loop, again, is a default WordPress thing. This is not a rock-based thing. This is just them using the query loop inside uh, core WordPress. And what I did is I said, hey, show all the posts that have the featured tag. So in order to get a post here uh, to display in the three columns, I go and I simply put a tag on a post called featured, which means if I have four, that oldest fourth one is not going to display. It's going to show the most current fourth one uh, or current featured one, and I'll have to just manage those, those tags independently. This is like old school WordPress in the sense. I remember Studio Press days, uh, speaking of Rafal, where that's how you kind of managed displaying content on a homepage or any page. So that's something I'll have to manually configure um, and, and watch as time goes. But this is, again, just a small, simple site. And then the blog post... Uh, 
the blog post section is again just their query grid. Uh, this is something that they have right out of the right out of the box. So if I go into patterns, in fact, let me do command K. We'll go patterns, and then we'll go into posts. Do do do. Is it called posts? Called content. Nope, it's not called content. Blog posts right here. Uh, so it's it's one of these top ones right here. So grid open uh, alternative or grid boxed uh, alternative. And I just selected this, and that's what I used for uh, that section of uh, of the homepage. They had this one by default. This is the one that was uh, by default. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't click into that and edit that. That's interesting. Oh, because it's locked. That's right. I'd have to duplicate this uh, and uh, to punch into it. So let's just do that. Duplicate. We'll just say Matt's blog pattern. So this is the one that they have uh, by default. I changed it up. I selected the, uh, the other one that shows all of the blog posts, but this is the one that ships with default. That's one of the great things, you know, love or, or hate blocks and patterns for various reasons. It's still re really powerful. Like this stuff was not possible uh, years ago for free in WordPress, like how old I'm sounding. I know there's page builders and all this other stuff, but this is great that it's inside WordPress core because you, you always had to go third party or custom code this stuff. So as, as limited as this is, it still gives me enough uh, to play with. And the only other thing that I modified is I limited the count uh, of the query block of this one right here. Uh, to six items per page, uh, and that is obviously just adjusting, you know, where the how many you know how many posts are being displayed here. I did six. I think it defaults at twelve or whatever. Uh, the offset is one because basically what it's saying is, hey, don't show. These are two different query loops. So if you don't, these are two query loop blocks stacked. So how do we show this one? This one has a different uh, different style. This one only shows one per page because we have like this more featured blog post at the top. And then this query loop right below that, which offsets by one. So don't show this one because this one's up here in full width and then show all of the others uh, that come after, you know, this one. So basically if I put this offset to zero, you'd see this true fans blog post, but we don't want that. We only want that one in this query loop up here. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I'm not going to go into like the query loop uh, explanation, but that's how I modified uh, that post. And then I'm just using their, one of their uh, call to action boxes. Again, removing the social uh, content that was here. I could probably actually remove this row. Is that needed? Is that really? Yeah, I can remove that row there. Uh, hit save, save, because I don't really need that extra row. And then I have a call to action block, which brings them, or button that brings them to a, a gravity form uh, where p folks can fill out uh, to apply to have their podcast featured uh, in my newsletter. All in all, you know, installed the theme, chose the colors, spent a, a couple hours just building out, you know, all said a couple hours building out this this custom query loop here, and then just picking which query loops I wanted here to show off the blog post. But other than that, didn't really change up anything else, uh, very uh, anything else dramatic. Uh, compared to what I designed here. And even, you know, the font in this, uh, the font spacing and stuff like this in 2024, I, I think the 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 typography that I chose for this, it just doesn't look that good. And when I punch into one of my blog posts on Rockbase, again, in my opinion, even this call to action that signs up, uh, that pops up to sign people up into the newsletter, is styled really well, uh, which is which is interesting because I'm using the Jetpack uh, newsletter feature of WordPress.com. Jetpack 2024 core WordPress. You'd think that those sty those styling elements would look uh, better, but they don't. I don't think it'll pop up again because uh, of the cookie. But it just looks and is styled much better. And support for that newsletter field sign up in Rockbase is better supported uh, than the core 2024 theme. Uh, it goes to show you the deep level of detail the Rockbase team, you know, went to with this. And even again, the same thing in 
this call to action uh, on the homepage, this newsletter signup is just the Jetpack uh, newsletter field, which looks pretty good. It doesn't look as good as their styled version that they have. Uh, you know, you, you'd have to find a, a form field that you could style to make it look like their demo, uh, unless they're actually applying styles to specifically supported uh, WordPress form fields, which I don't think they're doing. They just kind of style this themselves. So I don't think you'll ever get that kind of level of detail uh, with with the rock base sign up form, but looks pretty good for out of the box Jetpack sign up form. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how I uh, built out this theme, you know, using Rockbase. Again, if we go into uh, templates, sorry, not templates. I always do this patterns, template parts. And then we go into the header. This is the header. Uh, one important note here was in order to add this button, uh, turn this navigation item into a button, what you do is you create the navigation. And I want to see if I can do this without breaking my site. <laughs> you would transform a link into a button. And that allows you to, you know, build out the, the buttons in, in the navigation. So last navigation item, I just transformed it into a button, it still re retains the link, and it turns it into that button so that it looks... Uh, just like the demo up here where it has the newsletter call to action button, you know, right there. So let's back out of that without breaking it uh, <laughs> because I don't want to save that. So we're going to go back. Let's make sure I didn't break the site. Nope, I didn't. Contact is still there. So that's how I built it out with Rockbase. Again, um, really clean, really easy. I say this all the time. When you're picking a WordPress theme, you want to try to do it if you possibly can, to satisfy 95% of your needs, anything less, you're going to find yourself building out different components, changing things where you maybe almost should have just looked for another theme. I'd even argue that, you know, 85 to 90%, you're going to spend some time customizing it. And that's what I did here. Like this little featured section, I had to build this myself. You know, it doesn't take a lot of time if you know what you're doing, but if it's brand new to you, this whole building in the site editor experience, um, it's going to take you some time and you might find yourself looking for a theme that has all of the patterns and the blocks that you're looking for already styled and Rockbase had, for me anyway, 95% of them already out, out the gate. So I was really satisfied with that. Uh, again, check out my overview video of Rockbase. I know this was a longer video. I kind of wanted to get in the weeds of why and how I used it and customized it, but really fun, you know, using Rockbase and really goes to show you that you can design something fairly intricate inside uh, the full site editor because there's no third party plugin or any other asset that it's bringing in. It's just, here's all the patterns that they designed. Um, go nuts, you know, use it, combo it. You know, use different ones on different pages. You don't always have to use their specific ones uh, for their demo. You can mix and match and, and go nuts. So that's it for today's video. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. If you're a podcaster, check out the podcastsetup.com. If you just want more WordPress news, uh, go to the wpminute.com slash subscribe. Join that mailing list. That one runs on Cadence. Um, I don't know if I'll ever switch to Rockbase for that one because I like some of the more intricate things I can do with Cadence. Uh, but hey, you never know. So check out the wpminute.com slash subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.